Hello everyone, today I want to talk about something that usually doesn't get a lot of attention and this is the model deployment. So let's assume that you've created a super nice machine learning model and everyone is excited to use it and wants to play around with it. How do you supply these people with the predictions of your model and also how do you present the results? To answer that question I want to show you how you can build a simple dashboard that serves exactly this purpose. The easiest way to build such an application is to create a web app. It can simply be accessed from different places via the browser. For these web apps there exist many different design patterns, but one of the easiest ones is to have a front end, a back end and a database. The front end defines how the website looks like, so all of the buttons and drop downs and whatever you need. Typically this is written in JavaScript and there are some libraries that make the life of a front end developer easier, such as Angular, React or Vue.js. The back end will fill your website with life, for example by loading or reading data and also doing a bunch of other things like communicating with other systems and so on. For Python, common backend frameworks are Flask and Django. Finally, you have a database that stores your data and when we think of machine learning again, this would mainly be the binaries of trained models. You could also store other things like the uploaded files. Therefore, this storage totally depends on your data and you could either use things like Amazon's S3 or relational databases like a Postgres database. Data scientists and machine learning engineers typically have decent programming skills but are not experts when it comes to web or software development. So the big question is, do we have to build all of that by ourselves? Luckily not, there are a couple of libraries that make our life easier, at least if we want to build a simple prototype. For the front end we can use for example Streamlit, which is a Python based dashboarding technology. This means we don't have to write JavaScript and can very quickly build a usable front-end. Here are some examples. This website is fully built with Streamlit and uses the CycleGAN machine learning model to convert images into comics. Another example is this traffic flow counter where you can upload a video and the model detects cars on it. You can also create more complex dashboards like this NFL receiver dashboard which shows descriptive statistics about different players. Finally I also found this one pretty nice which predicts the sentiment of a text and also applies explainable AI to show which words had the biggest impact. Under the hood Streamlit of course also uses JavaScript to build this website but you can program all of it with Python. We will see a simple example later in this video. Regarding the backend we first need to talk about some concepts around model serving. So usually you start your machine learning project with building a model, for example this neural network. Then you train it and save the fitted model in a serialized form as a file. So for a neural network this would include the learned weights and the model architecture. Now the big question is how do you make this model accessible so that it can provide you with the predictions whenever you need them. This is usually called putting a model in production. To do so you need to run it in a server, so basically a program that runs in a loop and waits for your request to respond to them. For this the standard in web development is a REST API server. So we put our model there, it runs in a loop and waits for incoming requests. For a REST API server, these requests are HTTP requests, which use a special protocol to send data back and forth. There are typically different endpoints for a REST API, and here we would, for example, send the request to the predict endpoint. Finally, the server passes the data through the network and responds with the predictions. We know now that we need to put our model into such a REST API server so that it can respond to our requests. But how do we do that? Again we are lucky that other people already worked on this. With MLflow you can easily convert your model into an API endpoint that can be queried to get the predictions. To do so the model needs to be logged with MLflow. Let's see how this looks like. It all starts with running your training script that somewhere includes an MLflow function call to log the model. By default MLflow will log the model locally. 
This means it creates a folder called ML runs and stores the experiments and the data inside of it. To be able to deploy models, however, you need to log the models to a tracking server. This server can simply be launched by calling mlflow server with some additional arguments. In the code, we can then tell mlflow where we want to log our experiments. This can either be a locally running server, like in this example, the local host, but also a remote server. So now all of the models in our training script will be stored on the tracking server. This mlflow server comes with a so-called model registry. This registry allows to control the life cycle of machine learning models. I won't go too much into detail about it, but essentially it allows you to pass the model through different stages until it serves in production. The important part is that you can register models from specific training runs and also give them a name. Once a model is registered, you can do all sorts of things like versioning, downloading it programmatically, or, and that is what we want to do, serve it as a REST endpoint. This can be achieved by calling mlflow serve with some additional arguments like, for example, the model we want to deploy. This will package all of the model code into another server and creates an endpoint called invocations that waits for the incoming data. At this point, it would also be possible to build a Docker image that contains the server, the model, as well as all dependencies. The front end also runs in a server, which can be started by calling streamlit run and then the file name that contains the dashboard code. Once we call the model endpoint from the front end, the predictions of the model are returned and we can show them on the UI. In this example, we have two backend services running, one for the experiment tracking and the other one for the served model. And that's pretty much the full architecture of the web app I've built. As MLflow comes with a backend store as well as an artifact store, we can also see it as some sort of database. It stores the fitted model and additional information about the experiments in those databases. So with MLflow, we have a simple option to host our developed machine learning model and with Streamlit, we can query it and visualize the predictions. Now let's take a look at the simple dashboard that I've implemented. So this is the Streamlit application and its main purpose is to provide HIV inhibitor predictions about molecules using a graph neural network. That's actually the model I've built in the previous GNN series. With Streamlit, you have a couple of options. For example, you can deploy the application, record a screencast. You also have a couple of setting options like choosing a theme. I chose the dark theme here and that's something I want to use, the white mode. In this application, you have two options now. Either you upload a mol file or you specify a smile string. So let's drop a mol file here. And we can see that a visualization of the molecule appears on the right. If we additionally enter a smile string, we get the option to switch between the inputs. So if I select the smile string, for example, it tells us this molecule appears to be invalid because I entered nonsense. So let's go back to the file. Here it says this molecule appears to be valid. Now there's a button get predictions. And if we press it, we see a message fetching model predictions and then we get the prediction. In this case, it says HIV inhibitor. Also, we can expand this section and get further details about the model. For example, the confidence, the version, the name. And that's pretty much the full application. So you can use it now enter different molecules and get a prediction if they are HIV inhibitors or not. Generally, Streamlit only allows you to build single page applications, but you could implement a simple navigation like that. So this would only be an if else block in the code. And if you click on this, you end up on a new page. So that's all for the first part. And in the next video, I will show you how the code for this application looks like. Also, I want to mention that MLflow's main purpose is to track machine learning experiments and to ensure reproducibility. In addition, it provides a couple of handy deployment options that make it very easy to build a model into production. Finally, there exist several ways to do things, so the stuff I'm showing here is just one of many options. With that, I wish you a nice day and see you soon in the next part.